Good morning, folks. We'll come back to the sun, but I'd like to start with a filament eviction. Not ejection, eviction. A sunspot group pops up brightly flashing beneath him and had zero patience. Was like, yo, dude, move, move. And now an active region lies where the filament used to be. Got a lot to come back to here. So why have I been showing that moisture funneling to Europe? And so what if that low pressure cell hasn't moved in three days? Well, here's what. There are some parts of the planet that are just not meant to take days of rain on end. It began in Germany. It is now spread to Austria, the Czech Republic, and more. All experiencing massive losses due to the flooding. Luckily, human casualties have been kept to a minimum, but that's just a silver lining and it's not absolute. Speaking of storms, the convergence combined with the Appalachians narrowing wind pathways last night, and the wind map almost didn't know what to do with it. Worst damage was indeed wind-related. Gulf of Mexico, get ready, your first 2013 tropical system is at the tip of the Yucatan, and while no models agree with each other, they all have it hitting somewhere on the United States Gulf coastline. Eyes here today. That cloud line pinched off into a low about to meet the North Island as southeastern Australia may wake up chilly tomorrow. Storms out west in the U.S. actually made it up north of the border of Montana to near Edmonton. Got more on the way for you guys along with more in the central states. Yet another odd North Atlantic earthquake, a four-pointer in Ireland, makes two such quakes in less than a week that are allegedly once-in-a-few-years event. Yet another one missed by the USGS. If I can come back to yesterday's six-pointer, reports have come in that there were casualties due to falling rocks triggered by the ground shake. Had a gamma burst last night, again from way up in Celestial North. This is now five days ago, and NASA still does not buy my argument that the coronal hole stream has hit. As described yesterday, the latter half of the stream will be less disruptive, with inductions definitely lighter as time moves on. The speed continues to push 800 kilometers per second, but density is only around 1, after about triple that yesterday and over 10 just before impact. As described yesterday, the geomagnetic disturbance is waning as the density falls and last but not least from six days ago when NOAA claimed June 1 was the coronal hole impact, which the last three days of observations at this channel confirms. Just like the last powerful coronal hole that ramped speed this much, electron flux is building back up. This is more than I anticipated. Well, you might also remember that sunspots were in development. You can see just how much the Earth-facing disk has changed in the last 48 hours. The nice beta-spreading region up north, still no real magnetic mixing though. But down south, we have both polarities at the trailing penumbra, and this is so close to a Delta-class sunspot, I can smell it. In fact, just a few moments ago, she popped the good size flare. Didn't quite hit M, it was a C9.5, but surely indicative of potential to do bigger things. Umbral field about halfway turned through her Earth-facing opening. Backside coronal holes are swinging in. We wiped off eight days without a significant tremor on day two of the quake watch with the Taiwan quake. That's all we've had so far, and the second half of the watch starts today. Shots of our star to close as always. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.45 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.